Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are having a great day so far and if you are new, welcome. I hope you are staying safe. So today, we've got another comparison. A drugstore versus a high-end foundation battle. So this is the brand new Revolution Pro CC Perfecting Foundation and as soon as this popped up, and I noticed this arriving on Superdrug, I thought of the Estee Lauder. Now last year, I did a comparison between the It Cosmetics CC Cream, which is kind of the, the original, the OG, as far as like a foundation type of coverage CC high SPF product. And I tested this one against the Maybelline product that came for its neck and lots of people actually prefer to this one. But since those ancient times, a new successor, at least for me and in my opinion, has come in that kind of high SPF, tubey, full coverage, but glowy, luminous with skincare in there type of category. And this is the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Moisturizing for Makeup, my God. So catchy. So I thought what we would do is put these two to the test and see whether this new offering from Revolution Pro can challenge the Estee Lauder Futurist. We can only wait and see. What else can we do? Now, a couple of things I want to point out. I will have all of the information about these two foundations on the screen for you. There are some things I just wanna make sure you see and you note and you are aware of. First up, Revolution can be a little sneaky when it comes to fill amounts. And today is no exception. So this one from Revolution has 26 mil, I see you. The Estee Lauder has 35. So although it is significantly like more expensive, it's not by as much as you might think when you actually work out the price per mil, um, given that this is almost 10 mil less, nine mil less in here. Um, you can see it's significantly smaller. So just bear that in mind. I think that's something that Revolution tend to do quite a bit. They have a few mil less. Um, generally these type of products have a larger fill, 35, 40 mils, um, and even more sometimes. I've also noticed that the Estee Lauder has a 24 month shelf life versus a Revolution Pro, which has 12. And obviously there is a lot more SPF, a lot higher SPF in the Estee Lauder, 45 versus 30. So those are the main key differences I noticed just from looking at the packaging. The packaging, as usual, is almost identical, isn't it? that's kind of Revolution's thing, is to kind of, should we say copy? Should we say borrow? Should we say, who knows what we should say? Probably shouldn't say anything. That's probably the right thing to do. But that is kind of Revolution's go-to thing, is that they make more affordable dupes or um, imitations of high-end products. That's a topic for another day. So I'm going to be doing a half and half comparison of these two. If this one is just more than you wanna spend, more than you wanna pay out for a foundation, will this one do the trick? Will this one meet up to the Estee Lauder? Will it even be better? Who can say? Let's get started. So I've already primed my skin using my Tatcha Silk Canvas as always because I know exactly how that works. I know it's never ever failed me yet. So anything that weird or funky happens, it's not because of my primer. So I'm gonna go in first. In fact, I'm gonna go first with the Estee Lauder because it is the one that I know, my tried and true. I know what it does, I know what it do. Thank you. To be careful when you're only doing half a face not to go nuts because it's very easy to like pump and then be like, whoa, we've only got half a face, Susan. So here is the Estee Lauder, very, very thin, runny, watery consistency. If you watched my review of this one, you will know. Smells that has that fresh sort of, um, what we'd call it, skincare type scent. Um, and it definitely, in my opinion, yawn goes on far better with a damp beauty sponge than it did a brush. I'm just using the side of my beauty blender so I can use the butt on the other side and there's no cross contamination. With this one, I just find I really like the shade on me and my winter skin. 
it's a really good undertone um, I love the finish of this foundation it's very very smooth the only area it's not perfect if you watch my review is my forehead I feel like it's slightly not necessarily emphasizes my lines but it doesn't smooth them as like some other foundations i have it gives amazing coverage with a small amount of product i think i did like one and a half pumps there there's still quite a lot left on my tray um and it's like a a solid medium to full like you can see the redness and things that i have going on on this side very much covered over here and that gorgeous luminous finish that i love so now with the makeup revolution or the revolution pro i should say let's see oh okay i mean this is so much lighter guys god knows pray for me much much thicker totally different consistency much thicker it's not moving at all on my tray as we're gonna say as we're gonna say as we're about to see this is gonna be much lighter for a shade so thank you Superdrug for your ridiculous swatches so I'm gonna use the butt of my blender on this side oh I'm surprised I, I was really expecting it to be much <laughs> look at the shades oh my god thank goodness we aren't leaving the house today I'm almost praying for oxidization that's the first um so yeah totally different consistency this reminds me consistency wise of um the too faced do you foundation so as you're pressing it in it's almost like it's sticky it's coming back up like it's sticky it's sticky and thick so yeah it's, it's consistency wise totally different from the Estee Lauder thickness wise totally different from the Estee Lauder it's nowhere near as glowy either don't know if that's coming off on camera now this was like again one and a half pumps but the pumps were totally different versus the Estee Lauder not quite going as far having to work a bit harder to blend it out because it is very thick the smell is kind of a similar it's got that sort of skincare-y smell my god I'm gonna look ridiculous but it's okay you know I look ridiculous so you don't have to that's literally why I'm here coverage wise it's covered the majority of my redness but not there is still some peeking through just here and here as well um, I'm gonna try and build it up a teensy bit just to see it does say you know it can get to full coverage um, so I'm just gonna see if we can actually cover the last of that little bit of redness so I think that's pretty much now covered the majority I still say this was kind of like a medium to full kind of coverage so i'm going to zoom right in and turn the lights down now i who knows whether you're going to be able to see what i'm telling you through the lens but you're just going to have to trust me if not so the essay lord aside very very glowy like i feel like it just melts into the skin and it looks like glowy healthy dewy skin that's had a really nice drink of water that's how i feel like this side looks the revolution side at the moment is definitely looking heavier more foundation-y um because i guess because that thicker consistency i'm also seeing much more soaking into lines and exaggerating texture i don't know if you can see what's going on in this area but it's kind of separating in lines and it's a bit cakey around i haven't waxed my tash in days so as far as like where it's how it's like looking on top of like my matash area and around my nose i'm finding it really hard to get it into this area and move it around yeah it's definitely it's definitely taking much more work to kind of make it look smooth and even and it does have that kind of it looks like it's almost sitting on top of the skin as opposed to blending in it really does not look good on my nose oh god i don't know if you can see this but where i kind of blended it here it's just i feel like i'm making it worse by trying to blend it more but it's looking very like cakey and splodgy um, and then even like here which is not really a problem area for me it's definitely exaggerating all these lines here and it's just not looking like it's kind of settling into the skin like I want it to but 
often with foundations you know you apply it and then by the time you've gone away you've finished your makeup everything is starting to look better so I'm kind of hoping that that's going to happen I'm kind of hoping it's going to settle into the skin as they go with concealer and bronzer and everything else it's going to um you know work into the skin and and look better I, I know it's going to everybody pray for me I'll be back in a minute okay guys we are back we are back I have put the rest of my makeup on and this is my thoughts at this point so I have not set my whole face, I never really set my whole face, it's very rare that I feel like I want to do that. I have pretty normal skin so I don't need to set my base generally. Um, sometimes I choose to uh, if I feel like the foundation might move around or I feel like things aren't going to apply on top of it but generally I'm just gentle when I go in with bronzer and I'll start off with dabbing motions and then buff. Um, I didn't really have any issues on either side. I did notice that on the Estee Lauder side things just blended easier. I had to be a little more careful on this side but it wasn't problematic. You, I wouldn't say that you had to set this foundation um, but yeah it definitely didn't feel like as foolproof as easy shall we say that was it was a little more blending to be done you can probably actually see a bit of a difference as far as the blending but a lot of that is to do with the fact that this side is so ghostly pale um which is just obviously making my blush and everything look harsher on this side the problematic bit that i'm currently noticing is the here I'm just I don't know that my lens is powerful enough or that I can get close enough for you to really see what I'm talking about but here it's looking really dry and I don't have dry skin it's really looking quite dry in this area I just don't know if you're going to be able to see but it's like almost as if it's giving me dry patches around here that I didn't have any clue that I had. Um, it's also much more matte than I was expecting it to be. Like, I thought this was going to be super insanely glowy because I've tried Revolution foundations before that claim to be matte or satin or natural matte and actually are super glowy on me. Um, so I was thinking this was going to be an oil slick and it's definitely much more matte than the Estee Lauder side which is interesting it's definitely exaggerating lines like this smile line it's fully creased in there not just settling in but creased in this smile line which you can see this side is definitely better in that area it no longer looks like it's sitting on top of my skin which is really good as I hoped would happen it has kind of settled into my skin a bit better which is great to see it's not sort of sitting on top and looking cakey or heavy anymore but there are definitely some problems like whatever's going on here and the settling in now I did take a flash photo and bearing in mind that obviously this side the shade is significantly paler than the Estee Lauder side but I still think that the uh, Revolution Pro side is bouncing back and the Estee Lauder side isn't really. Um, I definitely feel like for so whatever reason which I did mention in the review of the Estee Lauder it doesn't seem to flash back as badly as you would expect given the high SPF in there but I definitely think the Revolution Pro is bouncing back even bearing in mind that there is a lighter shade anyway I feel like it's exaggerated and it's kind of hard to see that when you've only got half face to deal with but I, I definitely wouldn't suggest wearing this say on a wedding day or on a time when you want flash photography photos to look decent so yeah so far no disasters nothing terrible some slight issues but we are going to see we're going to see what happens although we are social distancing and self-isolating and all of the above we are still home with our kids we're still going to be in the garden we're still going to go for our walk um today so these foundations are not going to get away with it too lightly let me tell you i'm going to be giving them the eight hours it's super windy here and cold so we're definitely going to be giving them a proper little test today a proper minimum of eight hours and then i will be back to see how they're wearing throughout the day because that after all is what matters i'll see you in a few we are back what time is it it is just gone half past seven so these foundations have both been on my face now for a good eight and a half hours it's not been the toughest test there's not been any rain here or anything like that it's been really cold and windy 
but we did go for a really brusque walk and um, got some exercise in so my face has been certainly heated up it's certainly been tested with children obviously both my kids are home with me at the moment so they've had a decent test let me tell you so this is the revolution side remember i'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it on camera but there is just this area here i'm not a fan of it's looking very like cakey and sort of clingy to something probably like a skincare situation something like retinol or something that is not liking that area that i'm just not having that issue on this side at all as far as wearing they've both worn very well but it's just this sort of like breaking up clinging caking type of situation that's going on here that doesn't look great at all neither is looking like super crazy shiny given that i did not set with powder what i will say as far as whether or not the um, Revolution is a dupe for the Estee Lauder, they are completely different. It's definitely not the same type of foundation. I'd say this is like a satin finish or like a natural matte. Obviously there's light shining on and this is highlight, but the vast majority of it, it is a pretty matte foundation. I know that that's probably gonna cause people to think it looks better because on camera, matte foundations do look better because of the lights and things like that. Um, obviously, you know, my preference is a more luminous, glowy foundation, hence why I love this one. This one is much more of a matte foundation, but it is exaggerating texture um, and clinging to any kind of texture, line, dry, anything like that, I think it's going to exaggerate it. So that's something to think about. Forehead looks good. Nose doesn't look like shiny or wearing away chin on this side is definitely starting to wear and like i said just around here it's just not flattering at all but the main body is looking super smooth and perfected and I've, the coverage has really stayed so that is really good top marks for that so my final thoughts on these two foundations this is definitely not a dupe they aren't similar the estee lauder is much more glowy radiant foundation this one is it's much more matte than i was expecting i actually looked online and can't really see a statement as far as what the intended finish of this foundation is on revolution's website it's very vague as far as what the finish is which i think they generally don't sort of necessarily declare a finish a lot of the time with their foundations but it certainly isn't as dewy and radiant and luminous and i'm sure you can see that as this one so they they aren't really comparable if you're looking for a drugstore dupe of this one i would say that the maybelline dream urban cover is much more similar to this one but this one is a decent foundation it's held up very very well it looks really super flawless here i like the way it looks on my forehead i really don't like it in this area um but that is like my problem area my problem zone and if you have less problems than me well Fair play to you. I do think it doesn't feel as lightweight as the Estee Lauder. I can definitely feel it like to the point, you know, where you just want to take your foundation off at the end of the day. That's how I feel. I can feel it on my skin. And like I said, it definitely is like clinging to any kind of texture, lines, there's creasing and things like that. So if you have more so those problems than I do, I don't think it's going to be the best for you. If you have perfect, flawless, younger skin, then it may perform better on you than it has done on me. I wouldn't recommend this for dry skin for the reasons that I've said. Um, I think if you have dry patches and things like that, it's going to emphasize that. I don't think I'd recommend this for mature skin because of how it looks increased in my lines in this, this area. Oily skin, combo skin, normal skin, younger the skin, skin that's younger than me, I think this you will really, really like it. If you like this kind of more like natural matte, finish and you're looking for a really affordable foundation i think this is the best one i've tried from revolution if you're looking for something closer to the estee lauder i would still recommend maybelline as the closest drugstore equivalent i hope you enjoyed this video and it was somewhat helpful to you and i would love to see you in the next one otherwise take care of yourselves stay safe and i'll see you in the next one bye 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 bye, bye.